So um, here to give you a very, very, very short introduction to uh, natural language processing, which is one of the topics for today. So I'll be introducing the natural language processing track. And uh, the many people here in this room that I'm absolutely certain that I'm so much more knowledgeable, knowledgeable about natural language processing than I am. I'll just give you like an overview and, uh, on what natural language processing is. Is uh, in case you're not familiar, is the technique, or although I like saying it, is the art of say of extracting information from text and words automatically, which is easier said than done. Um, so I have 10 minutes to convince you on not only on how important this is, but how fascinating it, this is and how complex it can be. So I'll give you a, a, an overview on the different uh, approaches and, and difficulties that we may find when we, have, uh, when we tackle natural language processing and its relationship with, with APIs. So why, why studying language is important and why it's fascinating is because language is the way uh, in which all human experience is uh, delivered. From all the scientific knowledge, philosophy, art, to how to boil an egg, it's somewhere expressed in language and it, it's expressed in words. And this also includes all forms of human experience. Could be the information in our scientific paper, it could be the information in Wikipedia, it could be us tweeting about our opinion on a given product or a given brand. All this information is coded in words. So if we understand language, then we have an amazing source of information to understand the world and to do lots of interesting things. But the thing about language is that it's diverse, it's ambiguous, and we humans use it in, a, well, let's say unpredictable ways. So this is, uh, sometimes I feel that this is the way we'd like language to be, like very regular and with a very clear structure. But to me, language looks a little bit more like this painting over here. This is a, a painting by Kandinsky, and I, I don't think, I'm, or I'm not sure if he had language in mind when he painted this. But for me, this is a great metaphor of how language works. It's poetic, it's symbolic, it's ambiguous, and it's enormously creative. It's something we all use in very creative ways. And um, by creative, I don't mean, I, I'm not talking about literature or writing. Because we speak language, we are constantly creating new ways of expressing ourselves. So I'll give you a, a little bit of some of the different uh, problems that we face when doing natural language processing. And some of them, they will be covered uh, during the NLP track uh, during today. And uh, starting with uh, vocabulary, which will be the words that are part of the language, the fact that vocabulary is a word in English, but vocabulary might be, and it's likely to be a typo from vocabulary, and the fact that another random string of characters is not part of the vocabulary of a language. So having all the pieces that are part of, of a language will be one of the, of the most basic uh, problems to face. The second one is not all the, all the words that we use are part of dictionaries. The fact that we are creating, first we are creating new words constantly, so knowing the rules behind word building in a language can be very, very useful for this. And uh, particularly this uh, word building part is particularly interesting in languages like uh, Spanish, French, Catalan, Latin derived languages, because uh, words have plurals, verbs are conjugated in crazy ways and that sort of thing that uh, foreigners normally suffer with, suffer with. So knowing what's the rules behind making new words or conjugating verbs is also another part in, in natural language processing uh, morphological approach. Uh, words are never isolated. Words combine with each other and this is the way it works. This is for instance a, a drawing of cells in the brain and uh, it's I think a good metaphor of how also language works, or at least syntax works, because no, no words are never isolated. They work together, and this is the way they express uh, meaning. And to make things worse, 
meaning is n not necessarily uh, the addition. If you sum up the different meanings of where you will get gen the general meaning of a text, uh, I think it was last night, it was being discussed on how irony works. And if you have the different meanings of different words, it, it, you may not have the final meaning of a sentence, because it might be actually expressing the, the opposite of what's being sex, uh, said in textual way. And uh, this lady over here, which uh, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure if you'll, if you'll uh, recognize her or know about her, she was uh, one of the main lexicographers uh, on Spanish language. Uh, she's called Maria Moliner, and I'm sure that if she were alive, her works 50 years afterwards are still uh, terribly uh, useful and fantastic. And if she were alive, I'm sure she, she might be here today. And um, even when we have faced uh, vocabulary, word building, syntax, meaning, still language will be very, very ambiguous. And I'll give you some, some examples of ambiguity that we might find when doing natural language processing, because it can be tricky. We were talking about word building, word building before, and the thing is, well, we have a word like cold in English, which could be an adjective if you use it called drink, but it will be a noun if you use it in I got a cold. So in this case here, it would be syntax who could tell you that cold in one case is an adjective and a noun in the other. English is particularly flexible uh, in this matter because if you use a word in a certain position, then it can have several functions and other languages work in another way. I didn't mean to go all language nerd on you, but I just legged, adverb, legged, verb, adverb, and adjective, adjective language nerd. And uh, to make, make things more interesting, uh, when doing sentiment analysis, some words are very clear about are very clear about uh, if they have a positive meaning or a negative meaning. So you can have a word like excellent is always positive or it's very likely to be positive. But what happens with the word cold? Because it could be positive or either neutral if it's used in cold lemonade. It doesn't have a particular sentiment. But what about, what about coffee? Coffee is a beverage that is supposed to be taken hot. So is it negative if I found the word cold next to coffee? Well, in Spain we sometimes have coffee with ice. So Mm, not very sure if it could, it could be negative or not. But call, for instance, would be very negative when applied to a room in a hotel, for instance, because rooms in hotels are supposed to be warm and cozy and nice and not cold. So it, there is nothing really in the word cold that we can, that we, that tell us if it's negative or positive. It will be context that will allow, allow us to know if something is positive or negative. And uh, another type of ambiguity, ambiguity it will be uh, sentence like, I saw her duck. Does it mean that my friend has a duck? I went to see my friend and I saw her duck. Or does, it, does this mean that I saw my friend while she was ducking? Or I saw him with a telescope. Was it me that I was using a telescope to see him? Or I saw him while he was using the telescope? Obviously, in these cases, you need a broader context to know what, which one of the senses is the, the correct one. So context will give us the key in many of these cases to solve this type of ambiguity. Uh, so okay. during the day, you'll, uh, we, will we will have in, in the natural language processing track different approaches to this type of uh, problems that we encounter in natural language processing, more rules-based approach, more statistic approaches. And uh, why natural language processing and APIs are particularly interesting and why we also believe that APIs are one of the best ways to deliver natural language processing is because language is everywhere. It's very likely that in very different industries, you come across a problem that, is, that has uh, a linguistic base. So that's where APIs are particularly interesting because they allow you to solve in many different places the same problem without having to care about, about it. You just forget about it. The solution is, is ready for you. And in the end, uh, what we're trying to, to understand uh, when we study language is also to understand ourselves, because it's amazing how much a pencil can have inside. So enjoy the natural language processing track, and I think it's uh, Mikel Montero who will be starting the session on this topic. So thanks.